Hello friends, welcome back to online chalkboard. We are dealing with class 10 chapter 1 real numbers. We have so far discussed about Euclid's lemma, Euclid's division algorithm, fundamental theorem of arithmetic and we have also learned how to prove a number is irrational. Now we are coming to the last section of this chapter that is how can we differentiate between a rational number, irrational number using its decimal expansion. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, the link is available in the description box. Do watch those videos and then come to this portion. Um, do practice more questions and if you are finding these videos to be useful, do share this with your friends and if you are visiting this web, uh, channel for the first time, do subscribe this and press the notification button so that you get notification about the uh, latest updates of videos. So let's move on to our chapter today. In this section, we are going to revisit rational numbers and see their decimal expansion. So uh, we have we know that there are three types of decimal expansion. One is terminating decimal expansion, other is non-terminating decimal expansion. In non-terminating, we have two types, repeating and non-repeating. We'll first consider, uh, we know a rational number can be written in the form p by q. And it will have a decimal expansion, any rational number like 1 by 2, it is equal to 0 0.5. It is a decimal expansion of that rational number 1 by 2. So here we will be seeing uh, how is uh, this p by q form and the decimal expansion are connected. I will give a few examples of a terminating decimal expansion which are rational numbers. Suppose 0.375, this is a rational number uh, and I am going to make this into the form, this is decimal expansion I will making into form p by q. That is equal to I can write 375 by 1000, right? Because uh, after point there comes three numbers, so 375 by 1000. And if I just write the prime factorization of 375, 375 fives are 75, fives are 25, fives are. So it's like 3 into 5 cube, and this is 2 into 5 cube, right? 1000 is 2 into 5 the whole cube, 10 cube, that is I can write 5 cube, 5 cube cancels and get 3 by 2 cube, that is 3 by 8 is the p by q form of 0.375. Now I like consider any other number, 0.141. That is equal to 141 divided by 1000. That is equal to what is the decimal expansion of 141? This goes by 6, uh, 3, 47, 47 is a prime number. So 3 into 47 by 2 cube into 5 cube. Okay, let us consider some other 0 0.12 that is equal to 12 by 100 that is equal to 2 square into 3 by 2 square into 5 square. So, you get 3 by 25. So, this is the p by q form of all these numbers. In all these numbers, you see that the denominator is of the form coming as some power of 2 and 5. So you understand that for a decimal number uh, to terminate, for the decimal expansion of a uh, rational number to terminate, the denominator like p by q should have should be of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m, where n can be uh, greater than or equal to 0 and m is also greater than or equal to 0. Here see 3 by 8 is the lowest form here 2 by 3 into 5 raised to 0. Here also 2 raised to 0 into 5 and here both values are coming 2 raised to 3 into 5 raised to 3. So we understand for a, a terminating decimal expansion the p by q, q is of the form. Here q is of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m. Then only the decimal expansion of p by q will terminate. 
this is what we have learned about terminating decimal expansion just look into uh, page number 16 theorem 1.5 let s be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates the next s can be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are co prime and the prime factorization of q is of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m where n and m are non-negative integers. Here in this, this, this is a rational number with a terminating decimal expansion and we got a, it would be written in the form p by q where p and q are co-prime. This p and q are co-prime. Uh, there is no common factor other than one and you see the expansion, prime factorization of this denominator 8 is, 8 is written as 2 raised to 3 that is actually 2 raised to 3 into 5 raised to 0, 5 raised to 0 is 1 okay any uh, power of any number raised to 0 is 1 so this is of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m where n and m are non-negative integers you see they are non-negative integers so this is exactly what the theorem says i'll repeat the theorem for you let s be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates the next can be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are co-prime and the prime factorization of q is of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m where n m are non-negative integers so now there arises a question if like s terminates we could write it in the form p by q and q has uh, prime factorization of 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m can this come in the reverse way like suppose p by q is a rational number with um, q having so if we q is a number with q having the decimal expansion 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m will it terminate will the decimal expansion of p by q terminate let's check suppose 3 by 8 this is a rational number with prime factorization 2 raised to 3. The prime factorization of q here is 2 raised to 3. And what is the decimal expression? We can write 3 into I am writing it 5 raised to 3 both sides so that I can get here it's like um, 375 divided by this is 2 into 5 the whole raised to 3. Okay, that is 375 into thousand I will get 0 0.375 he got the number to be terminating let us see another number 4 by 25 4 by 25 suppose that is equal to 2 square into 5 square they are co-prime numbers and uh, into 2 square into 2 square so that I will get in the denominator as 100 that is 16 by 100, 5 into 2, 10, 10 square is 100, that is equal to 0 0.16. So I got, uh, this was having a decimal expansion, a prime factorization of 5 raised to 2 and I got the decimal expansion to be terminating. So you can say that if P by Q is a, if a number is expressed in the form P by Q, it can be changed into an equivalent fraction they are all equivalent fractions like 3 by 2 is changed into 375 by 100 like p by q is changed into a by b hmm? uh, and then we can find that decimal expansion is terminating so we understood this uh, the other theorem 1.4 we can say it in the reverse way like if uh, q is having a prime factorization of 2 raised to n into 5 raised to n then the decimal expansion is terminating theorem 1.6 page number 16 let x equal to p by q be a, a rational number such that the prime factorization of q is of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to n and n and m are non-negative integers. Then x has a decimal expansion which terminates. So you, theorem 1.5 says if the, the uh, decimal expansion terminates then p by q, q is having the prime factorization 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m and here 1.6 says this the opposite if x is uh, of the form p by q where q is having the prime factorization 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m then the decimal expansion terminates. Is it clear? Now let us consider another case where the p by q in p, p by q, q is not of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m like suppose 1 by 7. Let us see the decimal expansion of 1 by 7. 
one I'm doing the decimal expansion one seven zero point one za seven remainder is three that is four za twenty eight remainder is two two za fourteen remainder is six eight za fifty six remainder is four five za thirty five Remainder is five. Seven za forty nine. Remainder is one. It's coming again. Then again one za seven. Remainder is three. Again four za twenty eight. Remainder is two. So you see, here, you getting the decimal expansion to be zero point one four two eight five seven. And again, if you do it again, you'll see it will come as one four two eight five seven. Repeating and repeating, you get the same thing. Or you can write it like zero point one four two eight five seven bar bar on the whole numbers, which would be repeating as block. You see, you get a repeating numbers of these six numbers. And here also, you are getting remainders of say three, then two, six, four, five, one. Remainders block is like this. Remainder three two six four five one. Then here also again repeating three four three two six four five one. So we understood that this is a rational number, but it's having a non-terminating. This is non-terminating. This is not stopping anywhere. Non-terminating, and this is not having a remainder to be zero. What happens if zero? Is the remainder? Yes. This expansion will terminate. If zero is the remainder, expansion will terminate. So we getting non-terminating decimal expansion. But this is recurring, repeating again. This is recurring. Okay. So we see that uh, this number having non-terminating decimal expansion with recurring. And here p by q is form. Q is not of the form two raised to n into five raised to m. So we understood that if a number is of the form p by q and q is not of the form two raised to n into five raised to m, then the decimal expansion of that rational number is non-terminating and recurring. Okay. So from this we can conclude something that the decimal expansion of a rational number is either terminating or non-terminating. But if it It's not terminating. Then the decimal expansion must repeat. So the last case, what's left? Non-terminating, non-recurring decimal expansion numbers are actually irrational numbers. So let's look into the last theorem. Theorem one point seven, page number seventeen. Let x equal to p by q, where p and q are co-primes, be a rational number. Such that the prime factorization of Q is not of the form two raised to n into five raised to m, where n, m are non-negative integers, then X has a decimal expansion which is non-terminating, repeating. From this discussion above, we could conclude that the decimal expansion of every rational number is either terminating or non-terminating, repeating. Let's look into a few examples. Uh, exercise 1.4 question number 1 they've asked us without actually performing the long division state whether the following rational numbers will have a terminating decimal expansion or a non terminating repeating decimal expansion in this question we have been given so many rational numbers which are of the form p by q we need to check whether they would be having a decimal expansion which is Terminating or non-terminating, repeating. Okay, these are rational numbers. So of course, this decimal expansion will either terminate or will have an expansion terminating and repeating, non-terminating, repeating. So, let's see the first question. First one. Thirteen by three one two five. Or we need to see the prime factorization of the denominator. Three one two five. Five is a Two five fives are one two five fives are two five. I'm just dividing five five. 
So the denominator here I can write it as 5 raised to 5. Here 3, 1, 2, 5 can be written as 2 raised to 0 into 5 raised to 5 which is actually of the form 2 raised to n and this is of the form this is of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m therefore 13 3 1 2 5 has terminating decimal expansion this is it and the second question here second question asks write down the decimal expansion of those rational numbers in question 1 above which have the terminating decimal expansion. So in this question we got this has terminating decimal expansion. So for uh, question number 2 we will have to find the decimal expansion. I will do 13 by 3125 is actually we can 13 by 3125 is this. This would be like we can change into 13 into 2 raised to 5. Uh, multiplying denominator and numerator with the same number won't be changing because 2 uh, in, in 2 by 2 is 1 or 2 raised to 5 by 2 raised to 5 equal to 1. It's actually multiplying with 1 that won't be changing anything. So you get it like this 416 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 raised to 5 means 10 raised to 5 that is it will we'll get as 1 lakh that is 0 0.00 0 0.0. 0 .0 0, 4, 1, 6. This is the decimal expansion of 13 by 3125 which is also terminating. So this is all for today. We have understood how uh, to find, how to differentiate between a rational number having decimal expansion terminating and non-terminating but a recurring decimal expansion. Today in this video we have discussed about how to understand them and in the next video we will be discussing the rest of the exercise questions. So if you like this video do like and support us and also share with your friends it would be also be useful for them. So we will see in the next video. Thank you.